Hi friends, uh, welcome to another session of IIB with Saif uh, in the channel IIB Guru. Uh, today uh, I am going to take a class on uh, uh, making use of SOAP nodes or uh, like exposing a SOAP based web service. This is on request from one of our subs one of the subscribers. Uh, uh, we have asked about like how do we how do we create a SOAP based web service or how do we expose a SOAP based web service by making use of IIB. So uh, this class would be divided into two parts. The first part I'm going to tell like how do we create a, a WSGEL file. And then the second part would be how do we um, uh, make use of that WSGEL file and try to expose a web service from IIB's perspective. So both of them are by making use of IIB toolkit. The first part again I repeat, uh, it would be how do we uh, create a WSDL file uh, uh, in the, like by making use of IIB toolkit and the second part would be uh, by making use of this WSDL file created how do we uh, expose a web service so this is completely a class related to soap based web service or soap web service so uh, let me start Okay, so the toolkit. So let me start uh, by creating a WSDL file. So in order to create WSDL file, the first step uh, you need to keep in your mind is that like well, what what this soap based web service would be like the, uh, is meant for like so web service. See before we go with what SOAP web service is, uh, let's talk about like what web service is. A web service is a simple request and a response. Like you send a request to a service and it will, uh, it, it will give a response to you. Like, and uh, you, you may get a doubt, like what is the difference between like a, a normal website and a web service, which we are going to discuss right now. Uh, a website is a human consumable like who is going to consume it so uh, if you go with the standard website you just uh, type a URL and then you get uh, the resource which is available at that res uh, at, at that URL but who is who is doing this interaction a human being uh, making use of a web browser types a URL and uh, he he's he 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 what he what is the outcome of that the outcome is uh, whatever uh, information is present at that resource which is a part of the url that information would be seen this is human consumable but web service is not human consumable web service is code consumable like uh, pieces of code talk to each other uh, in that uh, scenario uh, we make use of a uh, web service. So how do we create a web service? This, this was a small uh, understanding of what a web service is. So web services are divided uh, in, into two types. One is SOAP web service, the other one is a RESTful web service. RESTful web service is a new one. SOAP web service is a, is a classic uh, web service. So how do we create a SOAP based web service? So before creating a SOAP based web service, uh, I want you to uh, know like um, uh, first we need to have a WSDL file available uh, before we work on a SOAP based web service. So uh, before creating a SOAP WSDL file, uh, we have to create a message definition. Why do we need a message definition? A message definition is necessary in order to define the request and response. Request is something which is sent from a client side to a web service and a response is something which uh, a web service tries to send to the client. So it's it's a request and response. So mostly so based web service would be request response based. So in order to create a web service uh, or in order to create a digital file related to a so based web service, you need to have a message definition for the request and response. So in this, uh, for this example, I'm going to make use of like a calculator. So what does a calculator do? Like, 
let's talk about a basic calculator so a cal basic calculator will expose like like four operations like what, what are the operations it's addition subtraction multiplication and division so in any ways like if you want to add two numbers what is the input that you are giving you are giving uh, numbers as an input two numbers as an input number one and number two and what is that you get as a response you get another number like the addition if, if addition is the operation that you are trying to implement on that then the addition of the two numbers that you have given as input would be the output so the request in this case for this web service would be two numbers as a request and what is the response you are going to get the response would be the addition of the numbers that you have given so the similar uh, the similar thing we will try to expose it as a web service so what what does our exp, uh, web service do a web service will take two numbers as input this is a request and it it will give uh, uh, the addition of those two numbers as a response so here we got request and response right so in order to define the request and response we need to create a message definition and now we will not create a message definition for a request as, as a separate message definition for request and then a separate message definition for response instead of that we will create a single message definition which will contain both request and response okay so let, let's start creating so message definition most of you know how to create it's like right click and go to new in the application development perspective right click new and then go to other and here we have we have to create a message set message set next and then let's name what is the name of the message set let's name this as calculator message set The web service that we are going to create is a is a calculator web service so let's name it as calculator as i said select the type of message data that you will be working with most often as i said that this would be a soap based web service that you are creating so uh, the message data <coughs> type would be when you scroll down you will have a soap web service soap message data for which you which you are going to use most often uh, in this particular message set okay so you are going to create a message definition for web service soap is data it's not an xml it's a web service soap data so next finish okay we created a message set now which has a unique message set id and then we'll go for creation of message definition so new message definition so let's name it as calculator message definition msd and here as we have discussed like there would be one operation addition which will accept two integers as input and subsequently after processing uh, the um, two input uh, parameters and uh, adding them we get a response that response would be sent as an output or send, send as a response to the uh, calling client so in the elements and attributes we describe two integers let's say integer integer a the type is integer and integer b is also type is integer okay and then a response response is also an integer so we'll say response c or let's say let's do it as add add c this is also a integer okay then 
we have other two global elements like called code Let, let's write as a f code and f message f message fault code and fault message so fault code let's give it as integer okay i will tell you like why i am giving these two parameters additional parameters so now it's uh, the moment to define the types so in the types we will define two types in fact three types uh, each type would be specific for like a request and response for a, a, a operation let's give it as request of add request of add which will have int a and int b as parameters and then subsequently have response of add which will have add c as a response and another complex type for error message and this error message will have fault code fault message okay right now we have defined our parameters request parameters response parameters and fault message specific parameters or error message specific parameters and we have also defined types now our message definition is done now next step is to create a visual out of this message definition it's very simple so in order to create a visual just click on to your message definition that you have created right now just this is a message definition right click and you have an option called generate in which you choose visual definition if you are using the toolkit for first time okay some initial settings have to be made the initial setting what i am referring to is see whenever you click this message definition this generate will not show by default you have to go to windows preferences and here you have to type message set another message sets there is option for enable menu menus for message set development this would be unchecked for the first time you have to check it and apply only then you will see this generate okay so do remember this before using gen, uh, the generate uh, wizard for visual uh, if using message definition you have to make the appropriate changes in the message set uh, specific menus by going to windows preferences the generate visual definition so here it's open it's asking uh, a series of uh, like it will give you a series of options you have to check the relative option what is specific to your visual so generate a visual definition from a message set so generate uh, so the options are generate a new visual definition from existing message definition we have a message definition so we want to create uh, generate a visual definition so this would be the appropriate option next so you have to select the message set project from which you are going to choose the message definition to create the visual definition visual definition so this is the message set project options generate xml schema definitions with current directory structures or generate xml schema definition with flat structure so whatever current directory structure is there for the message definition that you have created see the message definition or message set that you create would be stored in like the, the workspace the workspace is uh, in any toolkit that you try that you install 
any application that you create or any service that you create or any kind of artifact that you try to create by making use of the toolkit would be stored in a directed location which is called as a workspace so if you go with this option generate xml schema definition with the current directory structure so wherever this particular message definition is stored in the workspace in that directory structure the uh, xml schema definitions would also be created so i am making use of the uh, already present option generate xml schema definition with current directory structure already switch to that so i am not making any changes next so file format generate as a single visual file to generate a single visual file with all xml schema in line so for a visual file there are different parts i am not going to go in depth to the visual file i am just going to uh, like talk about that in a 20000 foot level so the, a visual file what is a visual file if you are uh, if you if you have already worked on java side uh, you might be knowing uh, like what is an interface interface in simple terms it uh, interface is something which does not gives the information about the implementation it just gives like what is what is that it, it expects as an input and what is that it gives the output that's a simple interface is so you can just uh, try to correlate it with like uh, let's let's suppose imagine your uh, television that you have in your home tv flat tv or any uh, plasma tv or led tv or lcd tv any kind of tv you 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 have a remote control we, on which you have different options to change the channels or to uh, change the settings uh, or change the color schema or anything you have a remote control uh, associated with your tv so you press one it goes to first channel you press two it goes to second channel uh, different options are you you try to increase the volume you have to uh, select the appropriate button but uh, did you any time notice that when you try to increase the volume what is that internally happening so that the volume is increasing in the tv you don't know the intrinsic details are hidden from you so that's a interface now television is an interface for you so the whatever the intrinsic details are those are hidden only what you are supposed to do as a user you you will be able to do that but internally what is happening when you change a channel or when you raise the volume you don't know so that's an interface so in the same way here if you correlate with the visual visual file visual file is nothing but it's web service description language web service description language it's it's uh, in simpler terms it's an interface related to a soap based web service so what does it, what does it contain it contains like in a hierarchy if we want to explain uh, web service description language or visual contains at the upper level it has so a service and then it has binding and then it has port type and then it has uh, operations and then it has data types sorry messages and then it will have data types so again i repeat it has service and then a service has a binding and binding has port type port type has a, a operation and operation has message and message has data type so this is the hierarchy of a visual file so if we uh, if we see if we consider the the lowest uh, lowest component of is del it's like data type data type is nothing but like um, it can be related to the xsds xsds of the request xsds of the response that is what you can relate it with so 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 what, what does this option says generate as a visual file then what does it mean it will just have the visual file and the related xsds would be stored in another file but when you go with a generate a single visual file with all schema inclined all xml schema inclined then all the related xsd will also be the part of the visual file so i go with this option and you have time uh, style as document or you can go with the uh, rpc is also the option there 
so in order to know that you have to you need to have in-depth knowledge about what visdel is i can take another session on uh, another separate session on visdel but this session is uh, is dedicated to just visdel creation by making use of iib toolkit so so rest of uh, rest of the option i am leaving like that next what is, what is it document okay definition next so no messages are defined in the message set operations are created for a message okay so i apologize for this so let me see whether the okay so let me start it again generate visdels definition generate a new visdel definition from existing message definition next and then you have to choose the message set sorry i i did not choose the message set i just you have to choose the message set generate xml schema definition with current directory structure generate as a single visdel file where i am missing something okay 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 so the problem is it is site i i created the types but i did not add them to the global elements so one by one i will add them i apologize for that add message from global type and then add message from global type add message from global type so before you go for creation of the visdel file you have to add these types to the global types and then save it and then go to the message definition sorry message definition generate visdel definitions generate a new visdel definition next and then select the message set project leave the option as general xml schema definition with current directory structure generate a single visual file with all schema in line and here you can see operation one so you can change the operation name operation name can be addition and then input is the request add out output is response add fault is error message so for a soap based web service the request and response would be a soap message so what are the parts of the soap message soap message the the parent node of the soap message it's again an xml message soap message is not a separate uh, kind of message it's an again an xml message but it has something called a soap envelope so the parent node of this xml message that is a soap message is a soap envelope which contains two child uh, elements uh, one child element is soap header uh, which is uh, not mandatory it's an optional and the other child element is the soap body and the soap body will have the actual xml request actual xml request which needs to be processed in order to get the response and soap body also has one more child called as fault so fault so again i am saying soap body has two children one child is uh, the actual content or the actual xml message or the actual xml request which is to, which would be processed and a response would be sent to the uh, client which is asking the request the other part the other element of the soap body is uh, soap fault so whenever there is an error while processing uh, the soap request uh, the uh, and the error message has to be displayed as part of the soap message then it would be set on the section called as soap fault okay so for that reason i i arranged an error message a uh, complex type which contains the fault code and fault message so next 
so soap can predominantly soap works on either http or jms in fact we also have option uh, for to uh, for soap to be running on other transport protocols but predominantly soap is soap will be working on http or jms but 90% of the soap web service are working on http so right now we are we will make use of soap over http soap action so you can specify the action again as same as the operation name it's addition next finish so now we we created a visual file you can see a visual file so this this ends this session so in this session we have learned about some some points about so web service or web services and then we have seen how do we create a message definition specific for creation of visdel and then we also create a visdel file in the subsequent class i'll make use of this visdel and create an application and try to expose the functionality of calculator which will be specifically uh, catering uh, the addition uh, function thank you if you like this video please subscribe my channel and do comment me if at all you have any uh, questions on this particular video thank you